Before I introduce myself, I want to tell you a little that you don't need to answer right away, but that I want you to keep in mind. A father and a son are driving on the highway, and the two men get into a horrible car accident. The father dies, and his son survives, but he's severely wounded. He gets rushed into the hospital, but when it is time for surgery, the surgeon says, I can't operate on him. He is my son. Who is the surgeon? Please keep the answer in your mind and don't say it out loud. With that said, hi. Mein Name ist Emanuel, ich bin 15 Jahre alt und ich komme aus Deutschland. Now think about what you've just heard about me in German. As everyone does when meeting a new person, you probably have an image about me in your head. But was that image shaped by my nationality rather than by my personality? Maybe some of you put me in a box, or you might have been thinking about the pretty common German stereotypes, and you now view me as a lederhosen wearing super punctual guy with no sense of humor, who's been drinking beer and eating sausages since the age of three at the Oktoberfest. <laughs> and although some of these stereotypes are true, don't worry, I don't drink. But I do have lederhosen though. <laughs> and I don't blame you for having these beliefs as they come from somewhere. Maybe they stem from an experience that you had with a country or group, or something you've heard about them. Throughout my life, I have always encountered different types of prejudices. As I grew up in a household that was influenced by two very different cultures. From my mom came the German influence, and from my dad, the Polish part. Constantly living between these two worlds was the only thing that made me unique to my peers. While I was growing up, my family also lived in both countries for multiple years each. Knowing the languages and being comfortable with both cultures made me feel German and Polish at the same time, such that when I was seven years old, I saw no difference between me and my peers and felt at home in both countries. As you can imagine, by this time, the world seemed like a fair and safe place to the seven-year-old me. Second grade had just recently begun, and I had switched schools, now receiving my education in Poland. I was a very outgoing kid and started to make new friends quickly. And soon, people that knew me would know about my background as well. But that was the first time that I really encountered prejudices. I remember that on one normal day, I went out on the hallway to get some water. And when I came back, two of my friends were marching through the middle of the room with their fingers over their lips, signalizing a short mustache. What shocked me most in that moment, though, were their right hands. They held them up making a Nazi salute while looking at me. I stood in the doorframe, closely following what was taking place right in front of me. My stomach became heavy, tears came to my eyes, and I didn't know what to say or to do. I was seven years old, and I knew about the horrible crimes the Nazis had committed. But I didn't do it, neither did my parents nor grandparents. And I knew that Germany was so different from what it had been in the 1930s or 40s. That day, I experienced the harsh reality of being judged because of where I was from. The seven-year-old me didn't realize what big concept was behind it, but I knew it was something completely wrong. As I grew older, I encountered more and more stereotypes in my everyday life. Fast forward from second to eighth grade, and six years have passed. I found myself in a completely new environment, studying in Germany. One afternoon, I was sitting in a class. And one of my peers made a mistake in his work. As he couldn't find his eraser, he just decided to scream out if someone had taken it. Instantly, one guy sitting right next to me stated that the Polish guy right here has probably taken the eraser. Quickly, everyone turned their heads towards me, staring at me as if the statement was true. The guy next to me even started to check my pencil case, looking for the eraser he believed was there. He didn't find anything but the humiliation was still there. And although it is pretty obvious where the stereotype about Germans came from, the prejudice of Poles being thieves is not that obvious to non-Germans. The two biases have a common point though, and that is their origin. They both stem from an event or historical time period and are now old beliefs that were true at some point, but not anymore. During the time of communist influence, Poland was way less wealthy than its Western neighbor, Germany. And to quote a Washington Post article from 1980, the nation was $19.4 billion in debt at the end of 1979. Meanwhile, the costs of imported oil and grain have reached billions of dollars, and meat shortages are running at 500,000 tons a year. 
So one could say the Polish economy wasn't great. And this inability of the Polish government to establish a functioning economy led to rising crime rates in Poland. Germans obviously read about this problem, establishing the stereotype afterwards. Since then, a lot has changed. The economy has become better, the people wealthier, and the country overall safer. An article by the Deutsche Welle, the German public international broadcaster, suggests that in 2014, crime rates in Germany have gone up by 2%, while crime rates in Poland that are falling constantly drop by another 14%. Both countries are now almost equally safe, but the stereotype still persists, as it has with the one of Germans being Nazis. At this point, you hopefully don't think of me as neither a thief nor a Nazi, just as I don't think of all Americans as unhealthy and McDonald eating, wearing cowboy boots and a hat, watching the Kardashians, or screaming at the TV because the New York Giants just fumbled the ball. <laughs> but why is that? It is because I've spent time in America, learning about the people and learning about the culture. And even though this gained me an insight on how the country is like, sometimes there is still a prejudice that I didn't even know I had, but that existed on a subconscious level. When that happened, I wanted to know more about why I had this particular prejudice. Like myself, psychologists have always been interested in knowing more about how much prejudices humans really have. But only in recent years, a new scientific study method has helped us evaluate that. The Implicit Association Test, or IAT. In this test, individuals connect an attribute to, to a concept. So basically, explain the high school vocabulary. If you think that math is absolutely boring and you fall asleep in every class, you would connect attributes like bad or boring to the word math very quickly. On the contrary, if you like English, you would associate words like good or fun with it. Afterwards, your results would suggest a strong preference of English over math. This test can also be applied to gender, nationality, or race to test biases towards a certain group of people. Measuring this, the inventors of the IAT, who are psychologists Marzarin R. Banaji and Anthony G. Greenwald, wrote a book about their experiences with the test and other studies that they conducted over years. Their work, Blind Spot, Hidden biases of good people describes really well what they found out. Their studies concluded that although we might not always be aware of it, we all have unconscious biases, sometimes even towards a group of people we consciously support. These results were not only shocking to the psychologists, but also to people who took the IAT or read the book, as they saw how deeply stereotypes are implemented in our society, and as they saw that they're even natural as it is in human nature to categorize people. And even though it is so common for us to put people in a box, we need to realize that relying on prejudices as a tool to describe individuals leads to a worse world, where we are disrespecting instead of accepting each other. When we meet a new person, for example, we might assume something about this person. But we need to look past that and overcome the lederhose, as I like to call it. At the beginning of this talk, I told you a riddle. Now think back to what you answered to it in your mind. Maybe you knew it instantly, or you might still have no clue that the surgeon is in fact just the mother of the child in the car accident. <coughs> the prejudice of a surgeon being male is that significant in our society. It is in fact a pretty common prejudice. The more important part is though, that you learn from it, and that the next time that someone asks you this riddle, you will be able to answer, it's the mother instantly. But sometimes it is not that easy to learn from our prejudices. So in order to achieve that, we need to be open to people and we need to be open to change. A study by Julia Zimmerman and Franz Neyer suggests that through travel, we strengthen our big five personality dimensions. One of which being openness to experience. With such an openness, we are more ready to critique our health beliefs and adapt a new viewpoint. Finishing this talk, I want you to keep in mind that prejudice is a learned trait. You're not born prejudiced, you're taught it. And if you want, you can ignore your prejudices, overcome them, and look beyond what we as a society just assume. Thank you. <laughs>